Uh, I want to start with something a little different this week, uh, Veterans Week. Uh, you yeah. Bryce McDonald. Uh, how did you hear about him, and uh, what did, what made you want to get him as part of your staff coming here? Um, I had known Ken for a while, and Ken was one of the guys that I had been in contact with. Um, and then another good friend of ours, Coleman Ruiz, who's a former Navy SEAL, recommended Bryce also. So I called Ken to you know, kind of find out what Bryce's backstory was and what, what was his, you know, where did he want to go and what did he want to do. And the more you found out about him, just what an amazing human being. Um, and then brought him out here to kind of see the area and um, get a chance to sit down and visit with him. And then after meeting with him, you know, it was, a, it was a no brainer to see if he was going to be part of our staff. What does he add to the staff? It's so many things. Uh, his attention to detail, his discipline, um, you know, his leadership. Um, he does so many projects um, and takes so many things off of my plate that allows me to focus and concentrate on coaching football. Um, but he's got a football background, was a great player. I think he was the captain at Navy. Um, he's coached football. You know, he was an offensive line coach at Navy, so he understands the coaching aspect of things. He understands the administration part of things. And then being a Naval Academy graduate and a captain in the Marine Corps that served um, really, truly understands leadership. So he wears a lot of different hats here, a lot of different administrative hats here. Um, he coordinates a lot of different things, and he's uh, he's really invaluable, to be honest with you, in terms of what he does for, for this program. I mean, one more thing. Is he kind of a, you know, obviously he had a situation where he, Got injured in war. Uh, is he a kind of a minor sacrifice and things that are more important in football? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, you know, we we have a special presentation on the Marine Corps' birthday every year that Bryce takes the whole staff through. Uh, we listen to the message from the commandant and we cut cake and um, we've learned some of those traditions. But I think he puts things in perspective for all of us. You know that what we're doing is a game. You know what we're doing is a is probably a luxury, um, and there are there are people like Bryce that have made sacrifices so that we can live the way the life that we live here in America, and there are people that have made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, you know, and I think that it shouldn't be just one day that honors the veterans. It should be I think we should always kind of keep them in high regard in terms of what they do. But it does really put things in perspective for all of us. What were some of the uh, things that stood out on film when you looked at it? Um. I think the two things, especially off offensively, was we got to convert in the red zone. We had four trips down there and only came away with 10 points. We have to do a better job uh, in our red zone efficiency down there. Um, you know, we got to get sevens instead of threes. Um, and then defensively, it was third down. You know, and there was some – give them credit. You know, they, their quarterback made some plays. There were times they should have given – could have been tackles for losses, but he escaped and made some plays. And, you know, we, we're, we've been very, very, very good on defense on third down. Um, and we weren't as what we normally are. I think they were 9 of 16 on third down. We're normally a lot better than that. Um, but those are the two things that stood out to us, both on the, on the offensive side of the ball was the red zone and the defensive was third down. On the uh, field goals, did you, uh, when you looked at the film again, what was the operation problem with those? The operation was good. The, we, had a, um, uh, we had a block on, on one. The operation wasn't good on that one. Um, the operation on all the other ones were good. Um, we had a breakdown inside and protection. And the guy got turned the way he shouldn't have got turned. And, uh, shortened the edge and gave the kid an opportunity to come off the come off the edge, and we we'll get that corrected this week in practice. You obviously had some quarterbacks get hurt in that game. Um, can you give us any updates on them? They're supposed to see what they can do today, and we'll we'll get a chance to see them kind of you know where they fit and how much they can do and what, where where we're headed here. So you don't know if they're going to practice yet or not. They're going to try to do some things. I okay. don't know what to what extent they will do. Okay. It was Holly hurt at the end? Uh, Wayne Cook was saying he was on the sideline with him, said he was having trouble. Did he re-aggravate anything at the end of that game? Unaware of any of that. Colin was full yesterday. And okay. Uh, did Dante have to go through any concussion protocol or anything? Dante is handled by the trainers, so every, every, everybody's handled through our trainers. If you have to go into uh, the scout team a little bit, if you have to like uh, get Justin ready to play in a game, is that something you have to start doing now if you were trying to get him up to speed for Saturday? Yeah, if we had to do that, yeah. Kyle Ford, uh, I don't think he played in Kyle did not play. He was unavailable on Saturday. We'll, he will be available tonight. Um, with uh, the kicking game, what's uh, what's been your philosophy on recruiting scholarship kickers out of high school? Um, we look at everybody. And so we don't look at a high school or co or anything. We don't put a delineation. It has to be a high school kid. It has to be a junior college kid. It has to be a transfer kid. You know, And that's what we did with Blake. We brought in a, a transfer kicker, a scholarship kicker. And, um, but we look at everybody in terms of kickers. So. We have a bunch of kids come through camp. We work guys out a ton. Um, 
we've always looked at guys in, the, in those situations. UCLA historically has been able to get, obviously, some uh, big-time yeah, All-American like kickers um, out of high school. Um, and I think you've recruited Luke Akers is the one mm -hmm. out of high school that you've gotten. Mm -hmm. um, is that, I mean, is that something you could see yourself doing more of going forward? We do it all the time. That's why I, I don't understand the question. We look at every high school kicker in the country. We look at every junior college kicker in the country. We look at every transfer kicker in the country. So. I guess he's saying you don't bring them in. We do bring them in. So we've offered kids, if they don't come here, that's... That's their decision. So we've offered high school kids, and we've offered college kids, and we've offered transfer kids. What's been the, uh, I guess, toughest part about creating depth on the offensive line as far as some of the snaps? And I think Ciala was the only reserve that, that's been getting in the game. I think all playing time is earned here. So, you know, it's just what, what's the accumulation during practice. And and Coach Trev having confidence in being able to put guys into games. And we feel really confident in those other guys. But, um there's also a continuity that goes along with with that in terms of who you play. So, you know, usually it's, you know, it's either six or seven or eight. There's never been really more than that. You never play 10 full lines. So right. it's just where we are depth-wise and how, how, do, how do those guys um, complement each other when they're in the game. Um, some Arizona writers have said that UCLA denied a white, out, uh, white uniform request by Arizona. Is that, you know anything about that? I don't know anything about that. It's, I don't think Titus has played this season. Is he going to ever play? He's unavailable. Good. Thank Good. you. Thank you.